Okay, our next set of presentations are pretty exciting from the perspective of what you've heard this morning with some operator uh, inputs and some the panel discussion and also our keynote speech talking about the objectives and such. But now we're going to move into three presentations where this forum is actually bending metal and soldering wires and creating the code. So these are th three specific examples where we're in invoking the idea of creating capabilities in the OSDU forum. And so the first one is uh, from the Geospatial Consumption Zone and David Jacob, where, there you are. Welcome. Hello everybody, I'm David Jacob. I'm um, a lead solution engineer with Esri, uh, mapping technology software. And uh, we have, uh, and um, a shout out to, uh, to my mentor, uh, Brian Bulme, who uh, received recognition this morning. Thank you to the forum for that on his behalf. Uh, so, you know, we heard a lot of inspirational words this morning and just the pre um, preceding presentation by ThoughtWorks, inspirational, um, um, messages about how to organize and get work done. So this is one example of, of what this forum has enabled um, technology to do and, and for people to bring the technology together. So this is the geospatial consumption zone. So a lot of words there, but I'll just get into it. Um, so essentially the, the Z, GCZ or Z, and there's even no standards there apparently. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it, its primary task is to enable the creation, management, and delivery of any data you have in OSDU in a geospatial way. So you have wells, you have seismic, you have well bores, um, well locations, surface, bottom, well paths, all of that. Um, you guys uh, do great in, in modeling the, the, uh, the reservoirs and the running simulations, but there's a whole lot of other people in your companies that you that who would like to see uh, the the fruits of your labor, bring that up to the surface, show them on maps, and that's what we help enable. Um, and so, what the this uh, consumption zone does is to provide an open API. Uh, so we have uh, um, geospatial data layers as web services coming directly out of Open, sorry, OSDU. Uh, data platform, uh, we expose those attributes that are in the data as much as possible as, um, you know, in, in formats that are geospatially friendly. Um, we allow geospatial search, uh, which includes just uh, irregular polygon searches and things like that. Uh, we normalize the data because uh, a lot of the data sets in OSDU, it's, it's in different schemas and such, and to bring it into a, a sort of a a normalized um, um, view is important for the for the uh, for the mapping applications, and um, importantly, we also handle uh, coordinate conversions. Uh, so you can work in local projects and and show the data on a world map, etc. So fundamentally, you know, we uh, the 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 consumption zone geo enables or provides map services out of the OSDU data platform. Um, architecturally speaking, we have uh, uh, the geospatial consumption zone sitting on the top right under the consumption APIs area alongside the other domain APIs uh, and the generic API. So it's a, it's a layer on top of your core, core system. Uh, so what data have we uh, and geospatially enabled to date uh, we have well tops and bottoms uh, and uh, paths and, and uh, 2D surveys and also 3D surveys and 3D live traces. The list is long uh, of the coverage, uh, but we are slowly bringing them online and some of those are dependent on whether um, that data set or type is available in OSDU, uh, then we uh, bring geo enable that. Uh, we have also, uh, goals for future data coverage of uh, other data elements, uh, uh, renewable energy items, uh, open footprint, ecological uh, biodiversity items, et cetera. So those are things for the future. But um, if you work with map, so map data, you know, it's points, lines, polygons, and a few other things. So I think we've figured out the, the fundamental way of how to get 
data in, out of OSD of those types and, and show it. So whatever other data sets that might, might come our way, we're positioned to, to, to deliver that. So I give you the context uh, of all of that, what we do. Uh, and uh, now we, this, is, this shows who, have, who has done it. I'm only, I've only been in the project uh, two months, so I can't really take credit for any of this. Um, you, meant, you heard uh, Brian Bulme, um, he's a project coordinator from, his, uh, from Esri, but there's a whole lot of other operators and uh, uh, developers that are constantly contributing to this effort. Um, and I'd like to give a special shout out to our Scrum Master, Joel Romero from um, Chevron, who, who keeps us all to task and, and, and provide, you know, keeps that, uh, that agile methodology at work in, in our teams. Uh, from uh, day, uh, week, week to week. So, uh, so, so I gave the context of the geospatial consumption zone um, and just wanted to, before I talk about, you know, this project as an example of OSDU forum at work, right? So how did this project kind of come about? Well, first of all, I, I guess a subject matter uh, kind of lend itself to it that everybody loves maps, right? You guys uh, use um, maps to get here in some form or fashion. So that popularity of map visualization, uh, you know, uh, drove the engagement of, of um, folks from uh, different industry groups and, and operators, uh, vendors, et cetera, uh, to come to the table. Um, a lot of input from, from, from the requirements, use of stories perspective, uh, and, um, and that participation level was kept at a high level, and, and so we've been able to work through the, through the backlog and, and, and keep the focus. Uh, so, as, as you might imagine, our project team is geographically diverse, as, as a, lot, a lot of the other project teams are, uh, split across uh, companies, continents, and time zones. So it, it was really, it's been really helpful for the, the, tool, the tools um, that OSD Forum provides uh, to enable this work. Right, GitLab and Slack and the backlog tools we use. Without them, you know, we, we would not be able to be um, productive and efficient in our in our work. And of course, again, back to that Scrum Scrum Master, that critical component of uh, the, that individual that keeps the efforts going and and uh, keeping the lights on for the project. Um, you know, there there are uh, some improve uh, some areas for improvements or opportunities that that we've kind of um, uh, recognized. And, and one is the nature of the, the, the world we work in, where data is hard to come by uh, it's, uh, in the space. And so uh, we've, you know, we've been set back about 50% of our time just looking for data uh, for, of various types to then pull data into the uh, you know, example data sets that we need in order to, to, to code the uh, geospatial side of the house. So um, that's, a, that's an area that we, we, we want to uh, keenly focus on is having a data ecosystem or a, an example uh, <laughs> data set that we can work toward. And then the, uh, the other aspect is the, the, the environment itself, the, the, the cloud environment where we've uh, had to work and uh, uh, been a little bit of a, a transient team uh, going from one uh, cloud environment to another. So I think we're on our third development environment in just in a year. So as, as you may know, any cloud migrations of any, any, any type is challenging, right? And so that has set, set us back a few uh, sprints, et cetera. So, uh, so those are you know, some of the, the uh, op uh, challenges and opportunities that we have uh, uh, to even make further progress. So um, yeah, so we have a blog uh, out there on the, um, uh, on the um, uh, consumption zone that was released uh, at uh, Mercury M15, and it's uh, so it should be rolling out with all the cloud providers, and then in this coming year for sure. Uh, yeah, so here's our contact information as well. So with that, thank you.